It is the 2024 holiday season and everyone is looking to buy a pen display. Just a few days ago, I discussed some 13-inch pen displays and now I'll take a look at 16-inch pen displays. I encourage you to watch that video on the 13-inch pen displays. The link is in the video description because that video adds some necessary context about how I'm organizing these materials and it provides some other tips. I will discuss these 16 inch pen displays. I place a star by my current favorite recommendation for this size. And now I'll start with my top picks. I put the star by the XP Pen Artist Pro 16 Gen 2, model number MD160QH. Overall, this is a great tablet, and I think it has a good drawing experience, largely driven by the new X3 Pro pen. I have several of these X3 Pro pens. In terms of pressure range, they are either decent or great. It really depends on the specific unit you have. You can see how much they vary in my measurements. What we really want to see here is that the pressure response of these pens should have a much tighter grouping. And I hope XP Pen can work on that over time. This tablet has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 which is very unusual for pen displays, which are mostly 16 by 9. It has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. That is a great resolution for a pen display of this size. The screen doesn't seem too pixelated, even though it's not a 4K display. This tablet retails for around $600. Next, we have the Wacom Cintiq Pro 17, model number DTH172. I do not own this tablet, However, I do own tablets in the same Cintiq Pro series, such as the Cintiq Pro 22 and the Cintiq Pro 27. And I've used both of those tablets extensively and tested them extensively. Based on my experience with those tablets, I'm sharing my thoughts on this tablet. First, I expect it to have a great drawing experience, which is what we expect out of Cintiq Pro models. It comes with the Wacom Pro Pen 3, which is another fantastic Wacom EMR pen it has the very low initial activation force that Wacom professional pens are known for, and it has a very wide pressure range. Like other tablets in this series, the tablet has a maximum refresh rate of 120 hertz. You might hear people say that having a high refresh rate like this eliminates pointer lag. Let me assure you, it does not. It does improve pointer lag, but in my experience, the improvement is like 10%. It certainly does not eliminate it. As with the other tablets in this series, it supports touch. I have to admit, I rarely use the touch feature with these Cintiq Pro models, but when it's useful, it's quite useful. And as with other tablets in the series, you're going to have to use this with a stand because the back of this tablet is not flat, so it won't lay down properly on a desk with any stability. The tablet does not come with a stand, so you're going to have to buy one. This tablet does have a fan, so you will hear some fan noise. What I've noticed is that the smaller the Cintiq Pro is, the less fan noise is apparent. So I don't think the fan noise will be bad. And just like the other tablets in the series, it is expensive. Right now I see it has a retail price of $2,500. And then we have the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16, model number DTH167. This is from an older series of Wacom Cintiq Pro pen displays. I do own this tablet and the drawing experience is great. It comes with the amazing Wacom Pro Pen 2. Again, this has a super low initial activation force and a very wide pressure range. Unlike the newer Cintiq Pro models, this tablet only has a maximum refresh rate of 60 Hertz. This tablet also has fans, but the fan noise is not as loud as the Cintiq Pro 22 or 27. It's a much more subtle sound. This tablet costs $1,600 and I often see it discounted to $1,400. And even though it is relatively expensive, compared to the other newer Cintiq Pro models, it seems almost cheap, and it provides a tremendous amount of value and a great drawing experience. And for most people, I honestly think that this Cintiq Pro 16 is a much better deal than the Cintiq Pro 17. And now let's cover some tablets that I'm still testing. Well, actually, there's only one tablet that I'm still testing in the 16 inch category. And even though my testing has barely begun, I would like to share some initial thoughts about it because people ask me questions about it. 
And that tablet is the Sense Labs Pen Display 16. I have probably used this tablet for an hour or two. And yes, I intend to make a full video about it later. But for now, keep in mind anything that I say deals with my initial impressions. Sense Labs uses the word thoughtful when they describe this tablet, and that is an absolutely correct word to use. It shows up in a couple of ways. First, the tablet comes with all the accessories you need, so you won't be hunting for extra cables. Second, the driver user experience is really good. I actually think it's the best driver user experience of any tablet I've ever seen, and that includes Wacom. Third, this tablet comes with two pens. Sense Labs was the first brand to do this, and I think it is a fantastic idea. The pen should have an initial activation force of three gram force, and that's what it feels like to me. And Sense Labs says the pen has a maximum pressure of 500 gram force. Unfortunately, I haven't tested the pens yet, so I can't provide specific numbers to verify this. I'll cover those measurements when I make the video on this tablet. I did see some diagonal wobble in my initial few hours with this tablet. I am expecting smoothing and stabilization to take care of this, like it does with other tablets, but I haven't done any extensive testing to determine how much smoothing or stabilization is required. This pen display also has a moderate, maybe toward the high end of moderate, amount of anti-glare sparkle. So if you are sensitive to anti-glare sparkle, you should take that into account. This pen display also has an OLED screen. It's the second pen display in the market to use an OLED screen. The first was the Wacom Move Inc. 13. And we don't know how long these OLED screens will last. So that's a big unknown, just as it is with the Wacom Move Inc. 13. The form factor of this tablet did surprise me a little bit. I had just used the Wacom Move Inc. 13 and that tablet is really thin and really light. So when I got this tablet, I just assumed it would also be really thin and really light. But it actually just has a normal thickness. Now to be clear, Sense Labs did not say it was supposed to be really thin or light. They don't describe it that way at all. So that was a little bit of a bad expectation on my part. But I did want to call it out because if you're hoping for that thin and light experience, this pen display is not going to give you that. The retail price of this tablet is $1,300. And now we discuss some tablets that I think might work for you, but you are going to have to accept some compromises and maybe use some workarounds. The first of these tablets is the XP Pen Artist 16 Gen 2, model number CD160FH. I don't own this tablet, but I do own the smaller 13 inch and 12 inch versions. And those two pen displays were in my top picks for the 13 inch pen display category. Overall, based on the reviews I've watched, this tablet does a pretty good job, and that matches my experience with the 13-inch version and the 12-inch version. There's only one topic that gives me some hesitation. This pen display seems to have more diagonal wobble than those other two. That wobble is visible in slow strokes, which is normal, but it also seems visible in fast strokes, which is unusual for a pen display. With most pen displays, even if there's wobble with slow strokes, that wobble just naturally disappears with fast strokes. I don't know how much smoothing it would take to eliminate this wobble or if it can be eliminated. I'm going to have to do more research here. So if you are going to pick this tablet, you will definitely have to watch out for that diagonal wobble, check the reviews, and ask around on the XP Pen subreddit. See if someone there has this tablet and if they are experiencing that same diagonal wobble and if they were able to eliminate it with stabilization and smoothing. This tablet sells for around $300. Then we have the Wacom Cintiq 16. I don't have this tablet, but I have the smaller 13-inch version. Without touching this tablet, I think we can be certain it has a great drawing experience because these Cintiq models generally do, and the tablet comes with the Wacom Pro Pen 2, which is an excellent EMR pen. The compromises with this tablet are because it's kind of outdated. It only supports HD resolution, so 1920 by 1080. Reviewers mentioned that the color range is not as wide as they'd like, and it doesn't match up to what we see in modern pen displays. Reviewers also mentioned that there is a noticeable amount of parallax. And this tablet uses anti-glare film instead of etched glass. The cabling for this tablet uses a proprietary 3-in-1 cable from Wacom, and it does not support connecting to your computer with a USB-C cable. 
This is very typical for tablets of its generation, but almost all modern tablets support USB-C connection. So ultimately, I don't think this is a bad tablet, but it is $600, and I just don't think it offers as much value as you'd want for $600. So if you really must have a Wacom tablet, and you can live with the older tech and some of its limitations, then this tablet might work for you. And now we get to the Huion Canvas 16 and Canvas 16 Pro models. There are so many of these tablets on the market right now, it's easier to talk about them as a group rather than individually. First, there are many models and they have been released between 2019 and 2022. They vary in resolution from HD to WQHD to 4K. Most of these tablets use the PW517 pen, though I think one of them uses the PW507 pen. I've talked about the PW517 pen a lot. The pressure varies from okay-ish to great, depending on the unit you have. And you can see that from this chart. This generation of Huion's pen displays tends to have more anti-glare sparkle than you see in other brands. For example, I own the Canvas Pro 16 4K Plus. That pen display has the most intense anti-glare sparkle I have ever seen. I don't like how much sparkle it has, but I can make myself tolerate it. Anti-glare sparkle increases with pixel density. So while I see a lot of it in the 4K models, you should see less of it in the WQHD and then the HD models. Ultimately, if you really want to get a Huion 16-inch pen display, I think there are two options. Option number one, get one of these tablets that comes with the PW517 pen, and then spend a little extra money and buy the PW550 pen, which is backwards compatible with these tablets and has a better pressure response in my testing. This graph shows you how much better the PW550 pen is in general. And research anti-glare sparkle. Look at the reviews and ask people on the Huion subreddit. If you can find someone with the same tablet, ask them what it's like with their own eyes. Option number two is simple. Just wait. Now, I have no idea what Huion's plans are. However, I am hoping, hoping that in 2025, Huion will release updates to its 16-inch pen displays that use Pentec 4.0 and reduce the anti-glare sparkle. Pentec 4.0 will give us a much better drawing experience because of the way pressure is handled with the PW600 pens. And I know Huion can address the anti-glare sparkle because they've already done it with some newer models. For example, the Canvas 13 Gen 3 or the Canvas Pro 19. If you have questions or feedback, please leave a comment and try to explore the Drawing Tablet subreddits. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this video.